The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. As we gather in our Lord's presence, together we pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose people are knit together in one holy church, the mystical body of your Son, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in the lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. All Saints Day was originally started in 609 CE, and it is a day to honor and pray, pay respect to departed loved ones. And so today, we recognize the following saints. Robert Bohm, Dorothy McNeekin, Betty Maxwell, Irene Flint, Frank McClure, Pat McClure, Helen Jones, Howard Jones, Ray Coop, Gordon Sandon, Don Worry, Cartney Needham, Ed Pryor, James and Joyce Littlefair, Hazel Littlefair, Edith and Archie Barr, Dolores Kibble, Tom and Edith Spicer, Bill and Florence Hart, Ralph Manley, Violet and Stanley Carr, Rod Carr, Freeman Moore, Doris Chasha, Marion and Noel French, Art and Sadie Williams, Alan Guy Jr., Wolford and Eleanor Ross, Gail Ross, Joe Norwich, Kathleen Rock, Laura McLaren, Bill and Kay Arthur, Robert Forber, Marjorie Thompson, Irene Snowden, Art Booker, Art Tucker, Gordon Sandon, Ed Joy. A reading from the Revelation of John. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, All men, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. All men. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these? 
robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 34, found on page 744. We will read verses 1 to 10, and then verse 22, alternately verse by verse. Page 744, Psalm 34, verses 1 to 10, and verse 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I followed in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Praise and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord like none of them they live. Over the page, verse 22. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. And together the prayer. Hear us, Lord, when we cry to you. Calm our bodies and minds with the peace which passes understanding, and make us radiant with the knowledge of your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of Christ. One of the most memorable and foundational moments of my seminary education occurred in my preaching class during my middle year in school. 
The professor teaching the course had a bit of a reputation because he liked to challenge the theology of his students' sermons by asking them embarrassingly pointed questions in front of the whole class. These pointed questions concerned what a person really believed, what a person had staked both their sermon and perhaps their life on in making the decision to go to theological school. One day, a man in my class preached a sermon on one of the versions of the Beatitudes, that section in the Gospel of Matthew or in the Gospel of Luke that begins with, Blessed are, in which Jesus describes the upside-down realm of God, a realm in which the poor or the poor in spirit, not the rich, are blessed, in which those who mourn will know comfort, in which the meek, not the bold and adventurous, will inherit the earth, and on and on. In other words, the realm of God is a realm that God graciously creates and gives us, and through that graciousness, we are invited to inhabit it. The preacher, probably out of perplexity about what to do with the Beatitudes, had decided to focus on those behaviors he believed should be characteristic of those inhabiting God's realm. Behaviors such as giving to the poor, comforting those who mourn, being merciful to others, making peace, fighting for justice, all of which the Beatitudes seem to reference. And so the sermon detailed all the things we each need to do as Christian people as we seek to inhabit the realm of God that Jesus proclaims. After the sermon, we all offered our feedback to the preacher about his words and his delivery. And to tell you the truth, I remember absolutely nothing about the feedback that I or others gave. At some point, however, our professor couldn't contain himself any longer. As he spoke, he addressed not just the preacher, but everyone. Listen, people, he said. This is not a pull yourself up by your bootstraps religion, a religion that you have to earn your way into. The purpose of a sermon is not to exhort others to earn their way into a relationship with God through their good behavior. No, the love of God is like a net stretched across the universe. And in our baptism, we are gathered into that net. It isn't possible, no matter what we do to earn our way into that net, and I believe it isn't possible no matter what we do to fall our way out of that net. Blessed are you, he said to all of us, and blessed are they, your listeners. Do you get it? If you do, go and preach that. And let any comments about your or their behavior come out of being caught up first in that net. At the time, I thought, how rude, <laughs> how mean. How dare he embarrass one of us or all of us in this way? At the same time, I was also thinking, ah, I thought Christian life was all about doing good things on behalf of others. But later, over the years, during the many times I felt alone or afraid or unworthy or irredeemable or cut off from God and from others, I have clung to those words. The love of God is like a net strung across the universe. It isn't possible to earn our way into that net. It isn't possible to fall out of that net. And so we are blessed, even when we were poor or poor in spirit, even when we were in mourning. We are blessed, even when we were meek and speechless in the face of those who love the sound of their own voices. We are blessed. Today we're celebrating a group of people in the Diocese of New Westminster who have given themselves to the life of the church in their parishes and at the diocesan and some at the national levels. As a part of this celebration, we get to hear citations read that detail the many, many actions each person has taken during their time in the church. Actions that have without a doubt contributed to the life and witness of the church in this place and beyond this place. Let there be no mistake about it. I and those gathered here today are deeply grateful for those actions. This is because those actions are actions of holy sacrifice, offerings of time and energy and imagination, precious gifts offered to God and God's people. 
But even more important than this, the people we're honoring today are people who over many, many years have lived richly and fully within the net that is the love of God, a net that, yes, does spur those who live within it to actions of love, of mercy, of comfort, of compassion, of justice making. But it is a net that also holds us fast during the times when we are incapable of putting one foot in front of another, during the times when we are inhibited from doing much on account of a pandemic, during times when we are perplexed into pausing on account of the complex issues of racial justice that keep emerging in the world around us, during the times when all we believe we can do is close our eyes and do our best to breathe. This is what our church and the people we honor today are all about. They are a community of people who have been and continue to be an important part of that net of God's love stretching across the universe, gathering others into itself, a net you don't earn your way into, a net that God be praised no matter what we do, we cannot fall our way out of. During these times, many of the good things we are accustomed to doing in the church have been paused, and we have been left for a time with simply considering who we really are, who we are really in the face of pandemic and the ongoing issues that have emerged in our world. It would be easy to think that we have lost our way when, in a sense, our hands have been tied. But today I want to tell you that this time has also presented us with the opportunity to remind ourselves that what is at the center of this religion of ours, this Christian faith we hold, we are not a pull yourself up by your bootstraps religion. For all the good work that many in this room and the rooms across the diocese have done, we are not a people who stand before God thinking that these good works will somehow secure for us a place in the realm of God. No, we know that God creates God's realm through a relentless and unstoppable love for us and for the world, and that all we have done and that all we will do are the result of an answering love, the result of our grateful and answering love. Thank you, ODNW recipients, for all the many things that have flowed from your answering love. Please turn to page 188. The words of the Nicene Creed, let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, if we go to nothing, of one being with the Father, forgive all things for me, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was taken. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
The purpose of the order is to honor and give special recognition to lay members of the diocese who have given outstanding service over a significant period of time in their voluntary ministry. The investiture service takes place every other year. The insignia for the order of the Diocese of New Westminster is a round medallion featuring the official badge of the diocese. The badge was granted by the Chief Herald of Canada on May 15, 2007. The colors and many of the symbols on the badge are derived from the coat of arms of the diocese granted more than a half century ago. The colors blue and gold are the main colors in the coat of arms and in the badge represent both heaven and the sea and the riches of the spirit. The Christian cross takes the form found on the medieval coat of arms attributed to St. Edward the Confessor and long associated with Westminster Abbey. In the badge, another symbol of St. Edward, the small birds are given a Canadian flavor with tails ending in a maple leaf shape, fitting for a Canadian Anglican diocese. The wavy white line symbolizes both the ocean and the river which surround much of the diocese as well as the waters of baptism. The insignia hang from a special blue and gold white silk ribbon designed by two leading experts in Canadian symbols. Our current recipients of the order in this parish are Mildred Manley, 2009. Fred Belshin, 2010. Don Forbes, 2012. Mary Riches, now deceased, 2014. Brian Hawes, 2015. Peter Williams, 2018. And so now this year's recipients, Mrs. Daphne Leanne Powell. The citation is as follows. Leanne has been an active and committed member of the parish for 24 years. She has during these years contributed in a major way to liturgical duties, including reader, reader, science person, intercessor, and lay administrator. She has served with compassion as a member of the shepherding program and is currently one of the team leaders for funeral receptions. Leanne continues to be a pivotal contributor to organizing the major parish fundraising events. She is fondly referred to by many as the Cookie Walk Queen. <laughs> the Cookie Walk, as most of us know, is part of the annual craft fair and sells more than $1,000 of homemade cookies in three hours each year, thanks to her organizational skills and enthusiasm for this project. Three years ago, in response to a growing need for a ladies' support group, she organized and implemented a very successful Monday, Monday morning craft and company group. This is an informal drop-in group for ladies from the parish and surrounding communities to spend a couple of hours working on crafts and or just socializing. It has been instrumental in bringing ladies of the parish closer together as a community. Leanne is a larger than life personality whose enthusiasm for the church and church programs is a beacon to others, an example of leadership by example. Leanne Powell. recipient is Mr. Kenneth Storzen. Ken has been an active member of St. John's Sardis for 11 years. He has been the parish treasurer for the past nine years and is solely responsible for restructuring the parish financial program and reporting system, allowing for a greater understanding by members. He has a boundless amount of energy, serving the parish as an effective member of council, as a synod representative, 
as a member of our last canonical committee and is routinely active in parish fundraising and maintenance projects. He also participates in liturgical duties for our second Sunday service. He is an outstanding member of the parish whose leadership style, enthusiasm, sense of humor, and unselfish benevolence has endeared him to all. In addition to his other responsibilities at St. John, Ken was also appointed Archbishop's Warden to Christ Church Hope from November 2018 to February 2020. Outside of the parish, Ken is a senior store manager of a BC government liquor store, an accomplished racquetball champion at the Canadian national level, and a very active member of the business community in Chilliwack. Ken starts. church. We pray for the peoples of every tribe and nation, for those whose lives are spent in poverty and squalor, for those sold as slaves or held in bondage or oppression, for those in positions of authority and power. You left your heavenly throne to dwell among the poor and the oppressed. Help us to work for an increase in justice, for freedom, security, and dignity for all your people. Jesus, friend of ser and servant of all, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world, in places where it struggles for lack of material resources, in places where possessions and power divert it from its mission, for all in positions of leadership and responsibility, including Linda, our primate, Melissa, our Archbishop and Metropolitan, Alan, our priest, Larry, our deacon, and Brent, Bishop and of the Diocese of Northern Philippines. Jesus, you resisted the seduction of power and humbly washed your disciples' feet. Help us to be a servant church, following your example in sacrament, word, and action. Jesus, friend and servant of all, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this community and for all to whom our lives are bound, for those whom we ignore, look down on, or push to the fringes, for those whose humble or menial workstations sustains the life of others, for our families and friends, for our neighbors, and for ourselves. You lived among the outcasts and sinners, offering acceptance to those who were despised. Help us to serve one another in love and to live in mutual respect and support. Jesus, friend and servant of all, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in trouble, pain, or distress. For those overwhelmed with the burdens of life, for the bereaved and all who feel lonely or abandoned, for those who are sick or dying, and for all who minister to them. Remembering especially this morning, Nora Taylor, Annie Beebe, Corinne, Bob, Matt, Bill, Steve, Shannon, Tom, You heard the cries of the needy, bringing healing to the sick and comfort to the sad. 
Help us to care for those in need and to accept from others the care we need ourselves. Jesus, friend and servant of all, in your mercy, in your mercy. We remember your faithful servants of every age, the saints and martyrs, and all who have given their lives in your service, those who have served you in the building up of this parish, those dear to us who now rest in your love. You suffered humiliation and death, but you have been raised up in glory. Help us to follow your example of humility and service, that at our life's end we may be gathered with all your children into the joy of your everlasting presence. Jesus, friend and servant of the lowest and least, in your mercy. In your mercy. We continue in prayer. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have peace with God through Christ our Lord and peace with one another. May we reflect upon that peace as we prepare to come to our Lord's table. Holy and mighty God, we give you thanks for the triumph of Christ in the lives of all his saints. Receive all we offer you this day and help us like them to run our course with faith, that we may come to your eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer 3, found on page 190. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. In the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses, that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Bottom of page 211. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Number one on page 212. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. This is the table not of the righteous, but of the poor in spirit. It has been made ready for those who love Christ and those who want to love God in Christ's name. 
So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You who come to this sacrament often, and you who have not been for a long time or ever before. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and all of us who have failed. Come, not because it is I who invite you. It is Christ who invites you to meet him here. we praise your glory reflected in your saints. May we who share at this table be filled with the joy of your eternal kingdom. For Jesus is Lord now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, go forth in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.